make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but more importantly, share this video. Morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining this morning. Kev. And then we got Mr. Michael Davis on here joining us this morning. Thank you for getting up this morning and rocking with us. So, yes, sir. Wanted to get on this morning and, and, and talk about um, the mindset and the power of a change, a changed mindset and, and just uh, how you guys feel about um, your current mindset or, or what needs to change in, in people's mindset. Um, just 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 on that word mindset, what that means to you. And, and I know just by talking to you guys offline, a lot of people have uh, different ways they're going to go with this thing, which which makes it a beautiful thing. So I just wanted to uh, throw that out there. That's what we're going to be talking about. And then uh, and then uh, release you guys to, 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 to flow as the Lord leads you. You know, first, uh, the, the great <clears throat> part about it was when when you came to me and you said mindset, mindset, and it's, it, it's been on my heart of how so many things was going on in the mind, the battle of the mind, that we're, we're moving, you know, through life. We see so many things, so many things flash, especially with me dealing with um, a lot of death. I will tell you about dealing with a lot of deaths. And one day I was just sitting back and I was just meditating on how did Isaac respond to his father Abraham? And and I, I was laying in bed and I said, Lord, I said, I don't know in the Bible where the lineage started. With Abraham, where where you call Abraham? I don't know. My wife laying right beside me, and I, I'm saying I don't know. Show me, show me in the Bible. He instantly told me go to Genesis 12. Instantly, so I obeyed. I done it. Boom, went right there. And when I'm laying in bed, I sit there and I say, Oh God, Lord, thank you. You're good. My wife looked at me and said, Huh? And I was smiling. I said, I asked the Lord, show me something. And he showed me exactly what it happened. But I didn't tell her what it was. But to get back on this mindset, I, 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 I want to say this real quick. Abraham was with his father starting off. And it said that right here in Genesis 12, it said that, me, me, I'm, I'm going to start right here in 11. 27, it was saying that Abraham and his father, they was traveling, but they stopped. They stopped at Canaan. And when they stopped there, he, his father died. His father died. And then in chapter 12, it, it said how the Lord, the Lord called him. He said, it said, the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to a land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will be a blessing to those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All families on earth will be blessed through you. Now, you hearing that right there, that, you got to leave. He's leaving something that he's been around for so long. Yes, I do. So long. To, yes. and, and the Lord is instructing him. Now, mm -hmm. now he, he, he known his father, the voice of his father, but now he's hearing the voice of the father. Yes, it's good. It's good. I'm going to stop right there. Go ahead, brother, Mike. No, no, yeah, no, no, you had me, brother. You had me, you had me zone in. I was, I was in it. it, it it's, it's amazing, man, that you went to something. I woke up this morning thinking of him and I woke up this morning and uh, I was told about the mindset. And, and what the God gave me was two P's. He said, man, 
when they got Abraham and Lot split, we say Abraham was chasing peace of God, while Lot was chasing the pleasures of life. And the mindset uh, that comes to play, and, and like you said, he had to leave something that he was so familiar with. But that's the start of the mindset change. Uh, a lot of times we don't want to leave what's familiar because it's comfortable. Uh, uh, it feeds our pleasures. Uh, it, it forces us to stay the same. Because we hate, oh, we all, you know, we all sit here, we all admit, we hate to change. Because change requires effort. Recre- change requires us to do something in ourselves, but also do something around people. And uh, me and uh, people talking about this uh, last week. You know, the people we're around to change their mindset, we have to change our environment and the people around us sometimes. And when you have to separate from somebody, it doesn't mean they're a bad person. They're just not right for you doing this new godly journey. And that's what we have to understand. You know, we don't, we're not saying somebody's a bad person. I'm just going on a different journey, so I need to split. I can say leave. And once we realize sometimes we have to change the people around us and the environment around us, because the people around us are steadily pouring. If they're pouring that negativity, uh, or you can't, and that ain't us, or just <clears throat> this can't happen, it's going to be hard for you to change, you know, as an individual. Uh, some people can't afford to change the environment that they're in, but you can always change who you're hanging with. That's, that's an easy one. Uh, you may not be able to afford to change the environment you're in, but if you change the people you're around, it allows you to change. And uh, a friend of mine, well, a friend of mine said a couple of weeks ago, which is stuck, he said, man, God told him, you're holding my line. And that thing stuck with me so bad. And he said, man, I started looking, woke me up in the middle of the night, and the people in my line, he said, I started seeing their faces. It was my children. It was my mother, my father, all the people I cared about. And God said, if you do not change, those people behind you don't change. But ultimately, you kill them for change. So that's the mindset. You know, it has to be more than just about you. You have to think about the people you're killing behind you because you won't change. So that mindset is so powerful. So powerful. We can go into it. I'm going to let P jump in because, you know, I don't want to get to rabbling, but I'm going to let P go ahead and put in his, his two cents. No, man, you're good. <clears throat> Both of you guys. You guys, you guys are, you guys are, um, are spot on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find something here. Um, like you said, we was rapping earlier, and I talked to Kay about this. Um, um, my my spin on it, or not even so much my my spin on it, my take on it, which which I'm glad um, God uses um, so many different pieces to put His body together. My mindset on this thing, as I was talking to Kevin, like I said, is 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 more geared to the legacy piece and what's coming after you and, and you alluded to that you know holding that line what's what's coming after me um not only in my household but what god has put on my heart to get out while i'm using the time that he's given me on this earth and uh um, i was looking at solomon and i was looking at david and you look at david's body of work the things that he done for god and and and, and all the victories that he's won well, God um, being with him is tremendous. It's like, wow, David, David was 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 that dude. And um, to see his son come along young and unskilled, as David said, and, and, and God takes um, takes David on home. But before he does, he, he lets he lets uh, he lets David know that you're not going to build this temple, that Solomon is going to build this temple. But. What David's body of work and what he had established to that point would be passed on to his son to further the work of God. So when I look at this mindset, my mindset from where I was uh, five years ago, seven years ago has completely changed to <clears throat> this thing is bigger than me. And when you when you like you were saying that the people you hang around, when, when you talk to different people about this. In order for your mind to think legacy, you can't be stingy. In order for your mind to think legacy, you can't be closed in. Because once you start thinking about legacy, once you start thinking about what God really wants you to do, it's 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 always bigger than you. So you know there's always going to be people that are 
connected to you or people that you're going to have to uh, uh, tap, tap in like you guys. You, you, you can't do what you're doing by yourself. And, um, you know, just a little piece of it. I got some scripture that I want to dive into, but but that's where I'm coming from uh, uh, with this mindset, that, that legacy piece. That's that's really on my heart. That's really on my mind. That's really in my in my spirit, you know. And and with me, it's like um, the, it, it goes to like the I feel like the beginning of it, you know, when 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 Abraham, you know, father, he, he got the instructions right there from the father to do this. Now, now he got a choice and a decision to make. And when Isaac went when they went up to to the, to the mountain and. He's about to be sacrificed. You think about what Isaac had to be a certain age to understand that he's carrying the wood up the mountain. And he acknowledged that. Um, Dad, wh who's, wh what's going to be sacrificed? Where's where the sacrifice? And he listened to what his father said. That. God will provide. God will provide, Isaac. Now, if you think about, you think about that. There wasn't no struggle. He 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 put him down to be sacrificed. He trusted his father, as Abraham trusted the father. So when he ride back to do that, it didn't say that they were struggling. He was fighting, or or, or Isaac called out or cried out. But the angel ticket said, hey, 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 the Lord see you. He sees your faith. He, he, you, you pass. There's a ram right there. So, so you think about Isaac seeing that ram right there along with Abraham, his father. And they sacrificed that. So that mindset of when Isaac grew, he knew that his father leaned on the Lord. So he knew we could trust and lean in too. I see my father work. I see what my father do, who my father was praying to. So that mindset of, of what I try to pass down to my son, my, my oldest son seen me at a stage where I was young, doing irresponsible things. But my son now and my daughters now, they see a father who's praying. They see a father who's taking care of the household. They see a father who's who's lending his heart and his hand and showing compassion to others. My son sees this. And he's more like, Dad, man, I want to be like you. But I, I tell him, I said, you're going to be better, though. You're going to be better. The mindset, the mindset. Some things that we got to break off of, of, of um, old things that will try to haunt you from the past. That's what, when, when I was going through what I was going through, the Lord had me to forgive. Had me to forgive. You forgive, but don't forget I brought you through. Now, that's, that's a mindset. So I can always re rely on what he's done for me. Changing, changing, changing the outlook of when you used to do something and you were comfortable with something that that's that 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 like old old things that want to draw you back to like ah oh, this don't feel right or this I, I can't do this I can't go here. So you see one thing one thing that. That God showed Moses. He showed Moses all the promised land. He showed it to him. He said, nah, you, you're, you're not going, you're not going in here, but I'll show it to you. So we got to see it before seeing what we want for our children. The legacy part of what we want to leave, be building this uh, to go further to our children further down, further down the line. Yes, sir. That's that's good. That's good. And and what you uh, two brothers talking about there is throughout the Bible. If you everything you're talking about in the Bible is mindset. Is they, they don't use the word mindset, but God was constantly giving His soldiers to change their mindset uh, through work, His His wisdom, His words, through examples. Uh, but it all is all the mindset. Um, as you speak to your children with, with my kids, you know I'm, I'm repairing relationships with my older kids because. I was chasing pleasures. As you get older, you start changing your mindset. And like you said, you start praying. You start chasing those things that God 
has a line for you. You start understanding what the types of gifts God put in each in each person, his purpose for your life. Uh, and that allows you to change your mindset to be like, man, you know, we probably all heard you know, when we was growing up, man, I got time, I'm young, man, I got plenty of time, I got plenty of time. But we don't. That's that that that's the enemy saying you got time. All that time was technically wasted, but it wasn't wasted because God was God was doing something with you. God had you on that wheel, that potter's wheel. But we don't have time, you know, enough time to do everything we need to do. Uh, and, and time is something, as we all know, we can't get no time back. Once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, you know, but the Bible says, you know, forgetting those things that's behind you. A lot of times those things that's behind us locks us down from change because we're like, oh, man, I did too much, too much dirt. Or I did too much of this, man. God don't love it. But the bottom line, God is with you and God loves you in all circumstances. Uh, as we know, his word says, I'll never leave or forsake you. That means when you're doing dirt, he's with you. When you're doing good, he's with you. But when we're doing that, that, that pleasure stuff, he, he's there waiting with his arms wide open, waiting for you to say, Father, I'm just tired of this. I want to come home. And that's that mindset. You know, we, we get so stuck in the pleasures of life, uh, more than enjoy our lives to the fullest. And nothing wrong with that. But with the limitations, you have to understand that it's more to life than living reckless. You know, God has placed the gift in each and every one of us. And with that gift, there's a purpose. And once we understand that, you know, we can move forward. And as we grow, you know, uh, like I said, we grow. But it's also grow because who you started going around, who you started putting your lineage, your lineage. So then you start thinking about your kids. You're like, man, I got I to do something for my kids and get better for my kids. So they can see a different person, whether it's your sons or your daughters. You know, your, your daughters see a, a man of God. Guess what she's looking for? She's going to be looking for a man of God. Your son sees you praying in a man of God. He's going to lean towards, man, I got to be like my dad. Like you said, Brother Kevin, dad, you, you're praying. I see you on your knees and you know, on your face and crying, and just praying to God. That's going to help him with his family. Because now he's not, he's seen that. You know, that, that example, that good God example. Um, you know, I was reading uh, two weeks ago, James 1 and 2, and, and one of the things that speaks, count it all joy. But at the end of it, he says, caught in all joy when you caught into various trials in the NIV. And he was letting me know, you got to count it all joy, but I'm not promising it all will be roses. You won't have some ups and downs. But at that time, count it all joy. And I... I think Brother Pete told me last week, he said, man, I forget what he was saying, something about a car. We were talking about a car broke down. He said, oh, God just blessing me for something higher. He was counting all joy. He didn't look at my car broke down and saying, oh, that piece of junk, man, I'm tired of this car. No, hey, hallelujah. God is getting ready to bless me with something bigger or something better. So we have to get in the mindset of changing the most important per- person, that's us. You know, because once you start changing your mindset, you can help others in changing that legacy because it's not about us. Um, you know, God wasn't selfish, so he didn't, build, he didn't develop us to be selfish. Um, and it's not, it's our family, but it's those individuals also outside our family. You know, that's when you're really doing God's work. When you say, you know what, I want to bless this person right here. I don't know him, but I want to bless him. Because uh, as we know, it's easy to bless our family, the people you love. But what about that person that you passed by and knew you need some, some some godly word or just need some help? That's when you, you're starting to dig in and say, okay, you're doing it. You're, you're doing good now. But that mindset of, of not being selfish, because a selfish person, it, it, it's hard to work with a selfish person because all they can think about is themselves. So, but that's not God. You know, God was never selfish. So that mindset is powerful. I'm, I'm so so blessed to be with y'all brothers and talk about mindset this morning because it's such a powerful thing. Um, but we're going to dig in. We're going to dig in. I see Pete. I, I can see he, he ready to jump in, so I'm going to let him dive y'all, in again. Y'all, no, man. No, man. I'm, I'm always, it's always my posture. I'm always sitting back uh, uh, listen, listening to my brother Kev. And, and, and now that you're on here with us uh, this morning, listening to you guys, man. And, and, and it's awesome, like I said, how God does it. He just... It seems like we're going around in a, in a circle and, and, and y'all finish on me with each point and God is giving me something um, to, to jump in with. And uh, what you're talking about, you know, when it comes to 
outside of your family, that's when you get into um, that legacy piece, but you also get into, and it's all mindsets, but, but you get into that, um, the character of that person, you know, uh, somebody stingy, that's, that's, or, 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 or tight with whatever they got. Like you said, just, just, just us four, no more as they, they used to say in church, that that's a part of that person's makeup, you know, and I can know from, I, I know from talking to you and the things that you said, you have your hands on that, um, that's not, uh, one of the characteristics of you, you know, so, um, and, and I, I want to, I want to look at some, I was in uh second Chronicles, um, and two, <clears throat> and then real quick, like I said, I, I've been looking at this David and Solomon. So David's already gone at this point. And Solomon said, then Solomon sent the word to, uh, Hiram king of Tyre saying, as you dealt with my father, David, send send him cedars to build himself a house in which to live please do the same for me and just to to bring up everybody that's listening and, and you guys you, you may not know where i'm coming from just by that little snippet um david's already gone and now he's building his temple so he's asking the king as you dealt with my father deal with me do the same for me i need your skill men to come and work to build this temple I'm a king over here on the left side and you're a king here on the, on the right side. So now what we're talking about is the character of your father. When your, your father's, your father's no longer here. David's no longer here. So I can look at you and say, your dad was stingy. Your dad was this, your dad was that, and your dad was this, you know, I don't want to deal with you, but this king didn't do that. And, it's, and, 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 and the reason he didn't do that is because of the characteristics of David. David, in David's heart and how David treated treat, treated people when he was here. So his son got a pass off of his name. When when you live this life for this purpose of, of serving God, when you live this life to say, I'm not going to be here, um, I'm not gonna live forever. You, you can't be stingy. You can't you can't just have in your mind um when God provides or when God sends increase your way, it's just for me. I think I was talking to one of you guys, I, I can't remember, but if God sends finances in, when God takes you higher, God, what do you want to do with this? Is this something that you want me to use now, or is this something that you want me to put aside? Because just me reading through this, God is just speaking to me about the things David had. And there's there, there's there's the scripture or the book before this. That's when he took everything that he had and ante it up. I knew this was coming. God had already told me what to write. God had already prepared my heart to build this temple. Now he's telling me I can't do it, which is fine. He's blessed my son to do it, which is even better. And I'm going to give him everything that I had. I'm going to pass it over. These things like this um, is what I'm trying to 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 live my life um, to get to that point. But but you don't see that a lot. You, Number one, a man, once he's gone, it ain't too many men named to have respect on it. A, a, a lot of guys don't respect. If your dad was gone, I did business with your dad. Now you got to start from ground zero because your dad was shysty. Your dad was this or your dad was that. So my mindset is changing that how I deal with people. Like you were saying, how I respect people, uh, what people say about me when I'm not around. You know, because my kids going to come up. And then, then people that... That, that, that I put my hand on, uh, whether it's for a job or whether it's for uh, 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 anything, hey, go and tell them Pierce sent you or go and say, what kind of what kind of weight does my name hold? And, and, and I'm still young, so I still have work to do according to that. But 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 uh, uh, that's my piece for, for, for this for this round. You know, I'll let one of y'all brothers chime in. A lot of people fold. A lot of people will fold, especially if if their father's name don't carry no weight. So that child will fold. He will fold under, like, oh man, I, my daddy only left me, and let's say debt. He left me debts, and and it ain't got nothing to do with financial. But that's uh, he was shysty here. He was cold hearted here. He didn't show no love. He he beat mom. He, he left and he, he did all these things that put that child in debt and people seen and know who your father is. You must be just like it. So now it takes a commitment. See, a lot of us don't open up our mouth and just say, Lord, help me. See, that's a, that's a, they want to break some ground. 
But if you don't do this, you 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 hold thoughts in your head, and then you start figuring things out on your own, like this is how it's supposed to be. But this gonna turn out this way. If I talk to this person right here, I gotta do this. So you you have them doing more of uh, robbing, stealing, drugs, things that gonna try to make them make us feel like we we can't accomplish anything. And and those thoughts can build up in you for so long. That's why you see a lot of a lot of men, black men, at a certain age hitting their 35 and 40 peaks and they they're not moving forward or they 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 really abandon themselves and their children. We got to get back to the and, and God always like he did Abraham. He's always calling he always setting up, you can do this. You can focus. Make this move right here. Something that make it that seem impossible. But if you if we take a step, we can we can achieve those things. We can it, he will build you up. He he would he will show you. It's it's hard when your exposures and your surroundings seems like it's death. But you got to understand that you are life. You're breathing. God put this life in Amen. you. You are life. Yes. Change. It, it's hard to change surroundings. It's it's mm -hmm. hard to change. But if you step forward, if you move, you can you can do it. It. You got to be committed. Got to be committed. Um, P. I was telling you when last weekend. I wanted to go to my cousin's funeral, mm -hmm. but another relative took it past. Also, I was committed to go to another one. <laughs> same day, same time. And I'm like, how is this possible? That, that two family members funeral on the same day, different locations. I'm like, wow. But I was committed to one. And I said, I'm going to go to this one. I went and viewed the, the 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 one that I wanted to go to my I, my flesh wanted to go to and and the Lord gave me a word for the one that I went to now this 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 right here takes and it's a mindset because you you want to do something and you figure that you want to be somewhere but the, you 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 made a commitment and I was committed but the Lord gave me a word. Now, as he gave me this word, I was like, this this kind of too, Lord, don't nobody, I don't hear nobody speaking or reading about this, about Lazarus and the king going to hell to be for real. I, I don't hear I don't hear too many people speaking about this. I, people want feel goods, but he gave me some. And so the enemy tried to tell me. Come in with a come with a backup scripture. So he right there, fear. The Lord gave instructions. I want you to read this. So I went, read that everything went in line like it's supposed to be. At the end, you see people going up to the pastor, whispering in their ear, I want to know Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I sit back, I was smiling. And when I was riding home, I, 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 Pete, Pete called me. And I, I had my wife on the phone, but I told myself, I'll call you right back because I wanted to share the good news with my wife. And I wanted to share it with Pete. But, but see, but it's a, and I was like, I was laying right there, like, like, no, I was outside and I was like, Lord, I need a scripture. He gave it to me. It seemed like it, it's not fitting how we know what's fitting for the Lord. Amen. How you know what's fitting for the Lord? Yes. He just wants you to do it. Will you be obedient? Mm. Will you trust me? Mm. Now, you trust me all these years. Feed yourself with the word, starved out to death. That's what he mm. told me. I've been feeding myself with the word for the last 10, 12 years. Consistently, continually. Being committed to it. And mm. I see his hand. like it, It's like he moved. But how can we get to that spot of trusting the Lord in our mm. mind? How can we get there? Mm. A lot of people is, and then, and then 
with that being said of that individual or that us men getting to that spot, then how can we further raise the body of Christ in our children? It's good. Um, <clears throat> you, you, we, when, when, when you, when you were talking, man, um, you know, the spirit was open. So I looked up the word steward. Mm -hmm. Like you said, how can we get there? You get there by understanding. And with me, I, I don't have it all yet. You know, um, like, 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 was, was it Paul? I don't count myself to, to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, you know what I mean? I'm still trying to grab it, but even while you were speaking, God gave me a uh, steward. You know, he had given it to me pr prior, but then he brought it back to, to my spirit. A steward, I'm watching over this. Mm -hmm. uh, my job is to govern this. That's mm -hmm. my job. It's not mine. Like you said, the, God, what do you want to say? This life mm -hmm. is not mine. Uh, what you send through me is not mine. The gift mm -hmm. that you're giving me is not mine. The mm -hmm. wife and the children are not mine. So I need mm -hmm. to be on my face. But that's a mindset. See, mm -hmm. me coming up, if I go get it, it's mine. If I go get this money, it's mine. If I go out here and, and this is my girl, this, 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 this we, we put we put <laughs> our hand and our name on something. Right. But when that mindset changes, you understand that. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You don't own nothing. You right. gonna come and you're gonna go. But if you live that stingy mindset, once you go, you're done. You ain't yes. do nothing. You but see, we think we did something, man. I had this when I man, I had this, I had this. Old people tell us or older people tell us all the time. I ain't never seen no bus behind no hers. You ain't taking nothing. Only thing <laughs> what you what you take with you is what you put out. The gifts that you put out in this world, but the only time you will know, like you said, Mike, and like you said, okay, who are who's hurting? You gotta open yourself up. God, whatever you want to do, do it through me, please, Lord, do it through me because I'm a steward over this body. This is your vessel. You pour into it what you want to pour into it. My job is to use your Holy Spirit to keep everything that is not aligning to what you want me to do out. Whatever that is, I'm going to keep it out. Whatever that negativity is, when it don't feel good in my spirit, I want it out. Like you were saying, Mike, these people that's talking in my ear, talking that yin-yang, and I feel like God is really pulling on my spirit, I need to push you out. Kevin, mm -hmm. like you said, what, what, God, what do you want me to say? When you stepped up in that, this is scripture that God got me, and this is scripture that God want me to say. I'm, I'm a vessel. I can't go, I ain't going in here on my own strength. And when you do things on your own strength, you forget that you're a steward. And when you do things on your own strength, you you, you slide into that, that that stingy and you slide into that pride. And we know what happens when you slide into that pride. You get kicked out of heaven. We won't make it yeah. in, baby. Go, go yes, ahead, Mark. Uh, go ahead, Mark. No, no, go ahead, man. I, I was pulling with looking. Y'all two brothers pulling, man. I'm, yeah. I'm mesmerized. I'm looking. I'm like, man. But now, that selfishness, when, when you was, you was talking selfishness and, and Brother Kel was talking about commitment and obedience, those are strong words that... Uh, I ain't gonna say all young people, but young, a lot of young people that they have a problem with, especially when it's to the right thing. We'll commit to TikTok and all that foolishness, but when we talk about committing to something that's good, that's that's nourishing the, the, the spirit, it's hard. But with selfishness, when you was talking about that big selfishness and, and my spirit, that's why it's so easy. When you're selfish, it's easy to kill somebody because you're selfish. You're not thinking about that person. That's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's loved one. That, that you become selfish. When you can kill somebody that easy, you're selfish. Because you're not thinking about that pain that you're leaving somebody. You know, that, 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 that selfish spirit. And, you know, God had put it in my mind with so much. Mindset, Romans 12 and 2. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's letting us know that mindset. What, what, what you what you feeding yourself every day, you know, what, what you what you telling yourself or who's telling you something, you know, uh, who's the minister of your life? Mm. And it don't have to be the man in the pulpit. Is it TikTok? If you spending ninety percent of your time TikTok, and guess who's your minister? TikTok. If you spending ninety percent of your time watching ESPN, guess who's your minister? ESPN. So whatever you dedicating your life to, the majority of the time, that's your minister. That's what you want to pour out. You want to pour out more of that and more of God's word. And, you know, the, the, the church is a building. 
and, and, and Kevin when he was speaking, man, I was like, hey, he, he doing it because the church is a building. We are the church. You know, when we out there, we the church. People, people see us. We should be that person, man. That's a godly person. You know, I, I when I'm out, I try to always find somebody to bless, and it's not uh, money wise or something. Just time. If I see an old no matter the color or whatever, you know, I might say, hey, excuse me, man. So you need some help with your groceries, put that in your car, you need some help with this. But it's not, I'm forcing myself not to be selfish. Because I got a mother and a father that's that's older. And I want somebody to treat them the same way. Uh, so I, I, it's, it's who's in that line. Who in your line? You know, and, and when I'm with my kids, you know, I'm, hey, where's that old, that, that older lady right there? She needs some help. I send them, start to develop them to do the same thing because it's not about being selfish, it's about doing more for others. And that, like you say, you can't take all this stuff with you. Just say yours, that car, that big house, all that, that's not yours. It's great because God wants to see us blessed. But uh, Brother P said it. Uh, last week, we were, man, if you got all this money, man, you got no purpose for it, man. You're going to do wrong with that money because you ain't got no purpose for it. You, you want to do something stupid with it. And because there's no purpose, before you got the money, you have to have a purpose. You can't wait till you get it. Then develop a purpose. It's too late. Your mindset has to be, man, I need a purpose. So when it shows up, you're ready to move. You know, people wait till I get it, then I'll develop a purpose. It's too late. <laughs> it's in your hand. So now you're trying to develop a purpose, then it's just too late. Now you're going to start just, and I'm going to get this for myself. I'm going to get this for myself. Everything has to be designed to, to God and God's purpose in your life. When we get with God, God, then he reveals that purpose in your life. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, and and I, I, I think I told Peter this, man, when we, we did the gas a couple of weeks ago. Man, it was one of the best days of my life. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it was just beautiful because we had a chance just to sow into people and put smiles on their face. Like, you know, like we say, man, we had to put smiles in hooks. That's it. And, but it gave us that, 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 that purpose of it. Man, we had to do God's work. I mean, God was a given person. You know, God gave up his only begotten son. He was a given person. And that's who we, we he designed. It. He said, make man in my likeness. So that means we got to be given people. You know, uh, we have to use our voice and our gifts and our purpose to be better. But when we get better, Ultimately, the legacy to make people behind us better, to make people around us best. That's that legacy. That's going back to what you said, Pete. That legacy. We got to make people better around us. When they get better, they make other people better. Then they make other people better. And it's like the body of Christ. All with a you know, hand without right arm, it's no good. Uh, just like the three of us, you know. Everybody has a different gift. Man. <laughs> he was talking about it. two days ago. You know, it's it's like a cake, man. All the ingredients come together to make a perfect cake. But if it says it needs three eggs and only put in one, and that cake it's not gonna be good. It's just the the way we have to develop ourselves. Come together with no egos. Uh, come together understanding what the body of Christ needs. It means yes, we will have similarities, but we got different gifts. Once we put it together. That's when we become the body of Christ with no selfishness, no egos, committed to doing God's work, doing God's will. It's going to help save communities. It's going to help save young women and men. It's going to help save brothers. And that's the instinct of what we should be trying to do. And yes, we're not perfect. I'm going to be the first one to say I'm not perfect. Right. Never was, never going to be perfect. Right. I'm going to make mistakes. I made mistakes. Uh, and I just pray that I don't make serious mistakes that just take someone's life or something, but we're going to make mistakes. We're not perfect. Just because we're doing this podcast, we're not saying, oh, we're perfect. Right. We're doing this. No, we're giving you options. We're giving you scenarios. We're giving you different things to hopefully feed you to help maybe say, oh, I didn't think of it that way. So we're just out here just trying to do what we can to save the body of Christ. And it's about people, not about me, not about KLP. It's about people, trying to save people. And that's the end state of uh, a life, man. Being here to save people, not not be reckless. I mean, reckless, man. It, it, we all know the outcomes. You you ain't doing. Get shot, get murdered, serve some time, or get old and realize, man, what do I do now? 
And it's not that God can't turn that thing around, but man, you got to work hard at it now because the time you wasted, you can't get back. Now you're trying to get the skill sets to get your life better. And now you're frustrated. Oh, the man won't do this for me. Society won't do this for me. The man in society didn't make you do all the wrong things either. <laughs> you did it because you were chasing the pleasures of life. Sure. Not wanting to be committed to the right thing and the good thing of life. Not being committed to the things that take a little time. It's not that quick pocket full of, you know, pocket full of money. So we have to, as men, and, and I think we talk about all the times, take that self look. Change us first and realize that once I change me, I can change others. Uh, at the end of the day, take the responsibility of your own actions. It's not always somebody else's fault. It's what did you do? It don't take much effort to pick up some trash in your neighborhood. It don't take much effort to clean up your neighborhood. But we're always saying, well, they not doing nothing. They ain't did nothing for 400 years. Why are they going to start today? Right. What are you doing? Did you pick up that piece of paper? No, I ain't picking that up. That ain't mine. It's not the question. Did you pick it up? You know, we got to do the little things to get to the big things. As God says, don't despise the small things. Start small. Do something. Do something in your own neighborhood. You know, you start doing something, somebody else will do it. Man, you see people picking up, man, let's go ahead and help them out. Spark that change mindset. Spark that change in the mindset to say, it's not, I have, no, it doesn't have to be me. And I, I, I think me and you had this conversation again about two weeks ago. And I said, man, a couple of weeks ago, my mom and I had the best conversation. We, all, we have a great relationship, but we had one of the best conversations we had in our life. And I was just thinking, and I said, man, Ma, I just thank you because I didn't realize till I got old how poor we was. <laughs> but she never let our mindset think we were poor. We never act like we were poor. We never kept our yard nasty. We never parked cars in the grass. We kept our house clean. We kept our clothes clean. We would, had to be respectful. We had to do all those things. But as I got older, I'm like, man, you never let us live the mindset of being poor. We always thought we was middle class and we were, and we were, we were poor. So that conversation there was beautiful. I was like, man, I just had a chance to thank her and my father. Like, man, I just thank you because you never let that mindset of this the way you're supposed to look like or act like when you're poor. And it was just beauty. So uh, I'll go ahead and with that and, and, and let one of your other brothers, you know, jump in. Man, that's, that's, that's beautiful, Mike. That's for real. That's, that's beautiful. You know, I, my, 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 my final thoughts before we roll out, because each of us had great points that, that can spark something in us to move forward, to put a start, to put a start. And when when y'all brothers were speaking and I'm, I'm hearing what y'all are saying, it brought me right back to, to a scripture. And me and P was talking about this. P, you talk, we, you talk to everybody, P. <laughs> 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 about some good stuff. You know, you think, you think about it. You talk about, we talk about some good stuff, man, P. Man. But, a vital piece, a very vital piece, and, and take this to heart. It says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train. The training piece. God is training us each and every day. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in training mode. You're in boot camp now. Yep. You're in boot camp. You think about the disciples. They was in boot camp. Mm. And Ooh. that's where it starts. The acceptance piece. Your training start when you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's go. I want to end up with that, Pete. Go ahead, baby. Man, I don't know if y'all seen me looking at the looking at the phone. I won't look at it for time like that. Y'all boys, y'all boys, flowing. You know, I had a 
certain amount of time on this thing, but we 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 we're doing good. Um, I mean, some good points. Um, I just want to I just want to speak to the the guy that'll hear this, you know, and and I think a lot a, a, enough information has went out. But what you said, you know, at the end, you know, having that relationship with Christ. A lot of people don't know how to have that relationship with Christ. You, you, you have to, you must be born again. Like Jesus told Nicodemus, you know, it's not about going to your mother's womb and coming out again. We know you can't physically do that. It's accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal savior. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, once that's done, like you said, you, you, you start your boot camp. And I want to put this out there um, for people. Like you said, Mike, you know, the different mistakes um, along with those mistakes, those mistakes, a lot of those mistakes are made because of our background, where we come from, what we were subjected to. We made the decisions, but we made our decisions based off of limited information. And with that said, as you as you go forward in this walk with Christ, as you accept Christ, um, things will change. You know, I was that guy that what's mine is mine, you know, to the person that God took. And, and, and I'm not bragging. This this is all God. You know, son, I want you to pay everything that comes in that household. So you pay for it. So you say, Lord, you know, what is my wife supposed to be doing? You know, what is she doing? That, that I'm not talking about her. Um, and when he what I'm saying is when he begins to work, it don't necessarily feel good. But during that phase where it doesn't feel good, he's 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 like you said, you're in boot camp. He's pulling something out of you to get you better. Like like you're down in the valley, but you're going to come up. You're going to come yes. up. You know, so uh, during 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 times like that, you're like, oh, w- w- what is she doing? This is what I want you to do. And then when you get on the other side, you say, God, you was pulling stinginess out of me. You was pulling uh, 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 you, you was pulling uh, short, short patience out of me. You, you were you were you were showing me how to love your daughter uh, uh, the way you love her. You, you, you were pulling so much out of me down there in that valley that I'm grateful as I'm coming up and I can teach somebody else. I can I can like 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 we're doing right now, you know. Uh, that boot camp something real, man. That boot camp something real. You know, I just want to, you know, just throw it out there. Let let brothers know that some of that stuff that you're doing and some of that stuff that you that you got. Once you come over here, and, and Mike, you can you can attest to that. You you don't bring that stuff into boot camp. What you when you come in, you know, you got to start uh, uh, taking that stuff off. Hey, look, brother, you, you <laughs> talk talk. <laughs> you got to leave, man. You know, you got to leave it. I don't mean to cut you off. You're right. You got to leave it, man. You know, I. As, as Pete know, you know, I, I, I retired from the military and, and, and I recruited and people used to say, man, I want to join the military because I want some discipline. I said, look here, brother, they don't take your boot camp, take a bag of Lay's potato chip and pour it down your throat. Discipline has to be something you want. It's not something that's given to you. You got to want discipline. You, that goes to the mindset. And uh, that, 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 that's powerful, you know, that. that that mindset, you got to want some discipline, man. Discipline is a lot of things people don't want. Uh, they they want to talk about it. You know, the Floyd Mayweather, they love Floyd, Floyd Mayweather discipline, man. Exactly. Hey, Floyd Mayweather still getting up and running. You know, that 15 0 just didn't come by him not doing anything. He's disciplined. You know, they look at, you know, whatever entertainer they look at, them people discipline. You know, you see that certain side of them, but they discipline. Everybody you see that's successful is disciplined, you know. So you have to be disciplined. And, and, and I want to use one one uh, verse that is very powerful. And God gave it to him as power verse 18 and 21 when he said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And when he, I read it, because normally you hear people say, oh, life and death. And I read it, I said, death and life. Why did you put death first, God? Because God knew flesh was more powerful than the spirit. We talk more debt than we talk life. Basically, go back to what you're saying, Pete, of what we learn in our environment. And I get in, man, man, but this is where we at. You know, this this how we live in the hood, man. When anybody coming, that's debt. Instead of saying, man, I'm gonna make it up out of here. I gotta do some good things. I need to do this for my children. So God put debt first because the flesh, you gotta break that flesh in the valley. You know, when you're in that valley, God's stripping you. He's saying, man, you're here for a reason, but he goes back to James 1 and 2. Count it all joy, because when you leave, I didn't took some weight off of your back. I didn't strip some of that bad stuff off you. That valley is not bad. It's only bad if you stay there. You know, he says, although I walk through, that word through is powerful. He's saying, through means an action of move. 
You only the stench only gets on you when you stop and start thinking about oh woe is me. But if you keep moving, you know, see, just keep moving. You will get through it. I'm telling you, you gonna get through it. Yep. And that's the stripping. You see, I gotta strip you. I gotta take you to a bad place sometimes to strip you. You know, when it's all good, you you're comfortable. But when I take you to a place, even in our lives, when we go to that place of uh, suffering or you know, we lose a job or whatever, we start stripping ourselves. Man, what do I need to do? I gotta cut back in this. It's just that stripping. And that's what God does. When we go to that valley, God says, man, I need to strip you of that unselfishness. I need to strip your mindset of not caring for people. I need to strip you of those bad things. But when you come out of that valley, you will be a better person for your gifts, the purpose that I've given you in my perfect will. But if you, you go to that valley, the problem a lot of times go to that valley, we come out just the same way it was. Because we don't want to be disciplined. We don't want to transform our mind. We don't want to renew our mind. We're like, man, I, I, that ain't me. I, I got plenty of time. So we just got to be confident. So like, like, I think like both, both of you brothers say, man, to, to that young woman, all that young man that's out there, find that, 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 that place where God can change you. you know? God is the only place you can find peace. You know, A lot of people chase happiness. Happiness is emotion. That's that goes like up and down. But you want to chase peace. And the only place you can find peace is with God. And when you have that peace, life becomes so much better. That happens when you're happy on Monday, but you're depressed on Tuesday. You're happy on Wednesday, you're depressed on Thursday. But when you got God's peace, you even flow. When you got God's peace, I can bump into Brother Kevin and say, oh, brother, excuse me, man, I apologize, man, no big deal. I can hold the door open for a brother. Go ahead, brother, you and your family, y'all go first. Why? Because I got peace. That peace gives you that love of God, that joy of God that you can share with other people. It's that mindset. We don't always have to be hard. Oh, man, I can't believe that. He brought up on me to say, excuse me. And you will, we're going to take it there because he bumped into you. And peace of God. No, don't worry about it, brother. It's all good. Enjoy the evening. You and your family, man. Be safe. Spend time with your family. It's just those those things we have to learn to, to do and change the mindset. It's not always about being angry. There's nothing wrong with being peaceful and loving as a black man. It's peaceful and loving. You know, we need some loving people. But we have been on to say, I can't be, I can't show that side. Why not? What's wrong with that? And you'll save a life, you know. Respecting that system. You don't have to always disrespect them. Using the B word. What kills me with that is we use the B word, but don't call my mom, my sister, my relatives the B. I can call all other all other women the B word, but as soon as you say, but you just say women, that's not my that's not my sister, that's not my child. So that you know, I know we're going off a different different flow, but those things just hit my spirit. It goes back to commitment, respect, obedience, the mindset. If you don't want somebody else to call you, your loved one, that why you call somebody else? You, know, you may not be calling by name, but if you're referencing women, you're referencing women. So if the word is that bad, why do you use it? That's the, that's my mindset. Uh, I look at it like that. If it's that bad, why would I use it? Well, listen, man. I mean, no yeah, well, I mean, it's a good one to to, to leave on everybody. Kind of. Uh, We'll meditate on that. <laughs> Thank you guys, man. As always, man. Love you guys, man. I'm glad you guys were able to to to, to jump on, man. I know um everybody got something to do, man. So we're gonna hit, go ahead and, and, and wrap it up and um just accept, you know, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the that's the that's that's what we're that's what we all had to do. We had to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We had to open our hearts up and ask Jesus to come in. That's step one. After step one, then you begin to talk to Jesus right where you are. And he begins to give you the blueprint, the original blueprint for your life. Not the blueprint, like you say, Mike, that was on TikTok. Not the blueprint that's on ESPN. Not the blueprint that your cousin friend gave you. This is the original blueprint for your life. Once you tap into the original blueprint for your life, like Kev said, you get into boot camp. 
and then you start rocking this thing out like we said man we we don't we don't know it all we don't count ourselves to know it all we still learn it that's why we try to surround ourselves with brothers that's like-minded that's on different levels so we can continue to be pulled up and continue to go forward and continue to when you see us pull y'all brothers up and 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 and, and use our wives to touch the sisters man but uh we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up man love you and thank you Yeah.